Hi everybody, today we can look at properties of waves and after this lesson you'll know what waves transfer, you'll be able to describe the difference between transverse and longitudinal waves, you'll be able to describe five key properties of waves, amplitude, wavelength, frequency, period and the speed of the wave. So first of all if you have a look at this video waves transfer a huge amount of energy. You can see here one of the boats is about to be broken up by these huge waves pounding it. Now the key question is, I know waves transfer energy, but do they transfer matter? Well have a look, this is clear proof they don't. Because if you have a look at this ball, this ball is on top of the wave and it's just bobbing up and down as the wave passes through it. Let's quickly watch that one again. You can see the ball is moving up and down and the waves are passing through. If the waves were transferring matter, then that ball would move along with the waves. Now, there are two types of waves. The first one we're going to look at are transverse waves. As you can see, the waves moving this way and this is the direction in which energy is transferred. Now, if you look at one of those red spots though, you will see that these particles are just oscillating up and down at right angles to the direction in which the wave travels. That is a transverse wave. So particles oscillate at right angles, direction in which energy is transferred, which we can also say is direction in which waves travel. You'll also notice, and we'll do this later, that the wavelength is the point between two points on this next wave. And key examples of transverse waves are water waves and also light. As you can see from this video, we can get transverse waves working on slinky springs like that. Now, I want you to have a quick think, pause the video and work through this. So we have waves transfer energy without the matter travelling with it. The oscillations are at right angles or 90 degrees or perpendicular to the direction of energy. So longitudinal waves, these are the other type of wave. You can see this time the oscillations are parallel direction in which the wave travels. And you can see as well, we've got these compressions which are high pressure and these in the middle which are low pressure. Now, to make a longitudinal wave, you're going to have to move the slinky parallel to the direction in which the wave is going to move. And you can just about see these compressions going through and that point is just oscillating backwards and forwards parallel to the direction of the wave. Now, sound waves the waves that I'm making at the moment, are longitudinal waves. And you can see if you had a speaker here vibrating the air, have a look at just one particle. This particle is just oscillating backwards and forwards. And it's parallel to the direction in which the energy is transferred, which is that way. You can also see, as we'll talk later, the wavelength you can see is between these two compressions here. So longitudinal waves, if we look at it, this is a picture you might get in your exam, which is like a slinky spring. A wavelength can be between two compressions, or it could be between the centre of two rare refractions, which are low pressure. I would always do it from the centre of two compressions. It's easier to see where they are. So for longitudinal waves, the particles oscillate parallel direction which energy transferred. And they have areas of compression and rare refraction. And the key one you need to know is sound waves are longitudinal. Pause the video and have a go at this. So, the oscillations are parallel to direction of energy transfer or the direction in which the wave is travelling. Compressions are places of high pressure 
where the particles are close together and refractions are places of low pressure where the particles are far apart. Let's quickly have a look at an exam question now. A baby monitor has a sensor unit that transmits an image of the baby and the noises the baby makes to a monitor unit. The monitor unit then displays an image of the baby and emits the noise the baby makes. Compare the properties of waves that transmit images and noise from the monitor unit. So compare means similarities or differences or both. Be careful, we're talking about light because that is the image from the screen and we're talking about noise which is sound. Pause the video, have a think about what you'd write, then I'll go through it. So, light waves are transverse waves. The oscillations are at right angles direction in which the wave transfers energy. That's going to get you two out of four marks because you've made two statements already. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. The oscillations are parallel. You don't need to do that again because you've already said it there. Finally, we'll look at this later, but light waves have a much higher frequency than sound waves. So, on to our next section. We need to know the five key properties of a wave. We can look at each one individually. We can look at amplitude, wavelength, frequency, period, and speed of a wave. So let's have a look at this wave. We've got the undisturbed position. That's a line in the middle of a wave where if you imagine a water wave and there's no wave at all on the water, it would be flat. Displacement is a distance in a particular direction. So you can see the displacement of the wave can be any way up to the maximum. And that maximum position is the amplitude. Now, what's a wavelength? Well, that's the point on one wave to the same point on the next wave. So if I take that animation off, and let's have a look at this to check. That's what's called a crest. This is called a trough. And you can see the amplitude is the maximum displacement from the undisturbed position. We can measure it from above or below. A classic mistake in an exam is to do that. That is twice the amplitude. So that's the definition of amplitude. So what about wavelength? Well, wavelength is the length, it's a distance from the point on one wave to the same point on the next wave. So it could be that. It could be that from that point to that point. Or it could be that from that point to that point. So the wavelength is the distance from a point on one wave to the same point on adjacent next to the next point on the next wave. So what about frequency? Well, I want to explain this by looking at this animation here. I want to know how much of a wave must pass this point for it to do one oscillation, which would be up to the top, back to there, it's half an oscillation, down to there and back again. Now most of you think it's one wave. So let's have a look. As that wavelength passes through, that point's gone down, it's now gone back, that's half a cycle. It now goes back up to top and back down. So that is one cycle. And the frequency is the number of waves past a point every second. Or, of course, if one wave goes past this point, it will do one cycle. So it's the number of cycles every second. Now, if we have a quick look at this video, you can get the idea of the waves past a point every second. And if we now halve the wavelength, you can see we're getting double the number of waves past the point. So the frequency doubled. Now frequency was discovered by Hertz. And so the unit is Hertz. And it's given the symbol H little z. So what about a link between frequency and period? Well, what is period? P 
period is the time for one cycle. So if I start this film going, you will see that this particle is doing oscillations and up to there and back again is one cycle. Now, pause the video, get your phone out, go back a little bit and measure that with your phone. What do you get the time for one cycle to be? I've measured it at four seconds. So that's how long it takes for it to do one cycle. Now we know frequency is the number of waves past a point every second. And if you have a look here, that took four seconds. So how much waves do we get past a point in a second? Only a quarter. Now you notice one over four is a quarter. And so frequency is actually one divided by the period. Let's look at a different one now. Can you get ready with your phone and time this? So I've halved the wavelength, so I should have doubled the frequency. Look how much faster that oscillation is going. Now I measured it at two seconds. So of course, you can see there, if it takes two seconds for one wave to go past, then only half a wave past that point in a second. So actually the frequency is a half. And notice again, we can work out frequency because that's one over the period which was two. Pause the video and have a go at this question. So it's key to count these. One wavelength, two wavelength, three wavelengths on the diagram in six centimetres. So six divided by three is two centimetres is the distance for each wavelength. And the second one is they're testing your understanding of frequency Frequency, the number of waves per second. This is 10 in two seconds. So 10 divided by two is five, five every second, five hertz. One more thing before we finish. Other things you need to know. We've got what are called mechanical waves. Those are waves that need a medium to travel in. Things like water waves need water particles. Sound waves need air. The other type of wave, which you're going to look at in future lessons, is electromagnetic waves, like radio, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, gamma rays, x-rays, and light. And that's the common one that we talk about. So light can travel through a vacuum, and it doesn't need any particles, because a vacuum doesn't have any particles. Light gets from the sun to us. There's nothing between the sun and us. It is a vacuum until you get to our atmosphere. So let's just recap our key points. Frequency, the number of waves per second. Amplitude, the maximum displacement of a point from the undisturbed position of the wave. Wavelength, the distance between one peak and the next peak on the wave. Period, the time for a whole wave to pass the point or the time for one cycle. And finally, I haven't mentioned this yet, but it's pretty obvious, the wave speed is a speed at which the waves travel. Next lesson, we're gonna look at how wave speed, wavelength, and frequency are linked, and then do lots of questions on it. Finally, mechanical waves, these vibrations travel through a substance. Electromagnetic waves, these travel through a vacuum, and no medium is needed. Longitudinal waves, the vibrations are parallel, direction in which energy is transferred. Transverse waves, the vibrations are at right angles or 90 degrees to the direction in which energy is transferred. What you need to do now is to go away and uh, next to this clip are worksheets with answers for you to have a go at. I hope it goes well. Thanks for watching.